Help me. I'm falling. In the old days, working as a government scientist, I travelled around the country, often staying in temporary accommodation. This was well before mobile phones were in general use. At the time, the base interest rate was 18% and inflation ran at 30%. Health and safety were about sometimes, but rules were rarely enforced. There was a lot of left-wing politics going on, but not much political correctness. Even in midwinter, there was a complete absence of delicate snowflakes. Accommodation was obtained by just wandering around, chapping on doors, and so you never were really sure what you were getting yourself into. Most of the places I stayed in were well off the beaten track, and the places I actually worked at were usually not even on the map. Being a keen photographer, I always carried a camera around with me. My monthly salary was £286, but my wee minutes German spy camera had cost me £450. This meant I was stony broke, and so I was looking for a cheap place to live while I starved, for the next two months, due to the lack of funds for food and the like. But not to worry. I stumbled, literally, on a place which is only going to charge me £24 a month for a room. There was a sign in the window that said, Vacancies. And I thought I saw someone. A dark-haired woman, perhaps, peering out of the side window of a big house. And so I casually ascended the outside stone steps, stood at the door and rung the front doorbell. I rang it a few times, but there was no answer. I waited a bit more, then I turned around and walked back down the steps onto the pavement. Feeling a bit bemused, I was still half looking back at the door as I stepped back onto the pavement. As I walked onto the street, I inadvertently bumped into a young woman who was gaily walking along and I accidentally knocked her pink suitcase right out of her hand. She was a blonde-haired, good-looking young lady in her early twenties and she had the most piercing blue eyes. Her case fell open and the contents spilled out all over the street. I apologised for my clumsiness and said I was sincerely sorry, but she gave me a scowl as I stared at her clothing and underwear lying on the pavement before me. No wonder she was upset, I thought. Just at that point, the door to the big house opened. I walked quickly back up the stairs again, towards the door, to announce myself as someone who was seeking accommodation. The dark-haired lady at the door said to me that your room was beautiful and it should suit you marvellously. The lady was immaculately dressed and looked about 45 years old. She spoke in a clear and refined voice. Your room is all prepared for you, she said, with a pleasant smile. For me? I asked tentatively. Well, someone very like you, she said, well fixing me with a direct look. She didn't ask for any references and never even mentioned money. And so... I informed her that I was on a budget, but was prepared to pay up to £24 a week. 
Twenty-four pounds a month is just marvellous, she said. I want you to be happy. She gave me that pleasant grin again. You can move in right away. Now inside, I carried my bags up the carpeted staircase and entered the room. I looked around, sliding open some cabinet drawers and pulling cupboards open and like. In one desk drawer, I found a yellowed newspaper dating way back to 1832. This unsettled me. What was that doing here? But when I opened the storage cupboard door, I got a shock. The words, help me, were written in crayon twice in capital letters inside the door. Also, in the room, there was some kind of amulet dangling off the ceiling on a long gold chain. This all seemed most odd. Later, lying awake in bed in the early hours, on my first night's stay, I could hear strange creaking and groaning noises. I put this down to the sounds of an old house at night, that is, the wooden construction just naturally expanding and contracting with the temperature changes. I had securely locked the solid bedroom door from the inside with my big key, but in the dead of the night I was becoming increasingly convinced that someone was rattling the doorknob or tamping with the keyhole from the outside. Was somebody standing outside in the hallway? As I looked up at the ceiling, I could see gaps in the plasterboard. I had the feeling that someone was looking at me through these holes. But you know what it's like when you stay overnight in a strange place, especially an old house of this nature. Your mind can play tricks, and your imagination can run away with itself as it feeds on the isolation you find yourself in. No TV, no radio, no phone, no other distractions, and nothing to read, apart from an old yellowed newspaper from another time and age. On my second night's day, I again found myself awake in the early hours. I was looking around the room and pondering when I heard a muffled and torturous screeching sound coming through the wall. It sounded like someone or something was being strangled or it could have been somebody having a nightmare. In the morning I was putting out some rubbish from my room a few food packets and the leftovers and the like. Outside in the backyard, I removed the lid from a metal dustbin. I was just about to put my poly bags of rubbish into the bin when, to my horror, I noticed a dead cat lying inside. Later, I became aware that some of my personal items were disappearing. Bits of my clothing were being snatched away, it appeared. Moreover, there was a small hole in the wall behind the pipes in the bathroom, perhaps another spy hole, like the one on the bedroom ceiling. Another thing was bothering me too. At times, I could hear what sounded like ritualistic chanting coming from behind the door of a room at the top of the second floor stairs. In my mind, I called this the dark room. I suspected that I was being primed for sacrifice, just like the poor wee cat, and I imagined it could well take place in that room. I was invited to a drinks party for the following evening by the dark-haired lady, but I suspected that I could be drugged and taken advantage of, and so I left the place that day, never to return.